to give you a little bit of background on myself, when I was around in my early 20s, I injured and I kept having knee problems. And uh, I had almost a bone on bone, bone spurs, and just, just grinding in there. And, and so I went to the doctor and, and I had my left knee operated on and they went in and sculpted it and cleaned it all off and did you know, a couple of a lateral release and trying to, you know, whatever they could. And it was such a bad experience for me that after that, I just said, there is no way I'm going in, because I was scheduled for the other one to do it, and I just thought, no way. I will do everything within my power to heal myself in a way that's natural, and I didn't want to go back under the knife. So that's where I've, I've come from. And, and since that time, I've used, and I'm a runner, and I love running. You know, responsible running is actually good for you that builds your knees up. And so, and that's what I use to strengthen my knees. But I had to use ibuprofen for years. I mean, any long runs, that's how I build my miles up. I use lots of ibuprofen. Um, since starting with this, I haven't had to touch the ibuprofen. Um, it's just been a miracle. But during that time frame, I would take uh, glucosamine and chondroitin. I use the sulfurs, MSM, and that's a sulfur. Um, I used shark cartilage, that was a good anti-inflammatory, and there was another, and a number of just different things that I used. Um, different amino acids and combinations of them would oxidize your, you know, put oxygen in your blood. And so anyway, these kind of things I've used over the years, um, and they were okay. You know, I was able to build up my long distance over the years to a point where, um, if I I stopped running, they just deteriorate super fast, my knees. Um, and so I was just constantly having to, to deal with that. Okay, so um, before I get started, I need to say um, that I have to throw a little disclaimer in there. And um, so this video that I'm presenting to you um, is intended for information purposes only. And I have to say this. You know, I wish that uh, it wasn't such, but I have to say this because every person is different. Every situation is different. This is my story. And so my story would be different than anybody else's. And my prayer is that you can glean from my experience and have a healing in your life as well. Because the way that you approach this, approach this generally, will, you know, could be the same. How much you take. You know, it's, it's somewhat of a, of a you know, you're, you're kind of experimenting as you, as you go along and you start with a very small amount and, and, and some of you, you know, if you felt the need, just stick with the small amount, just stick with the dose that you would normally get. Um, but if you choose to experiment, and, and I know people who have taken a substantial amount of it, um, uh, quite a lot, you know, as they went through, and, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer you to some PDFs, so um, some web links and things like that. So none of those links or I um, am recommending that you do anything or take anything. And I'm not a physician. I'm not someone who can diagnose you is really what I'm saying. So. You do it on your own responsibility with your own liability as well. And I'm going to be putting on my, uh, I'll put a little, you know, some, some different uh, I can't remember, annotations, I think they call it in YouTube too, where I would, you know, give you different links and stuff. So if you're on a cell phone, you're not going to see those links. Um, and that's why I can't just write a little disclaimer off in that I have to you know, say that so that you can hear it on your, on your uh, smartphone. Okay, enough said. Um, I'm going to do my best to take as little amount of time and be specific as I, I can. Um, but again, if you have a doctor, if you have a healthcare professional, you know, seek their guidance with it, certainly, because everybody's different. If you're in a situation where you had um, your thyroid taken out or zapped with you know, radiation or whatnot, or you have all, everybody's so different. And so I certainly would not want you to, you know, just go through, be smart about it. 
but this is something that you can do yourself as well, you know. Um, just be wise with it and work through your, through it with your healthcare professional if that's what you choose to do. Okay, so enough said. Um, the borax, um, I put it in this little container right here. The borax is uh, an interesting thing. It's really the natural mineral of boron. And it's just like your salts. You know, if you get salt, like your Himalayan salt or Redmond salt, um, what happens is you have these uh, seas, you know, whether it's, uh, and it's the same with the, the borax. Um, and there's a couple of main borax mines in the world. One of them's in Turkey, and it's been used for thousands of years, the borax over there. Um, it's sodium borate and tetra something, but I'll just stick with sodium borate. Um, anyway, the sodium borate is mined in those in these two main locations. I understand there's some down in South America, and then there's other areas of the world that have a higher content of, of this mineral in the ground. And in those areas, they have virtually just almost no arthritis, osteoporosis. It's just it, it's something that's in their ground. Parathyroid is behind your thyroid. Um, there's four little um, glands in there, parathyroid glands. They're, they are the ones that have the highest concentration of boron. And boron comes from borax. Um, you can get boron out of borax is what they, you can do. And so I'm going to be giving you exact specific details as to how much to mix to get a specific amount. So that it's, uh, and then you can control how much you want to take. Or if you just want a maintenance dose. But um, these seas, certain seas, you know, as the, as the, whether it was in California, whether it was from uplift and it created an inland sea and then it dried out and then you have what's left over is these minerals in there. And it's the same with your uh, Redmond salts or your Himalayan salts, uh, things along that line. So um, anyway, that's kind of, that piece. Now, the body uses the parathyroid when you're low on boron. Um, it, um, as I understand the, the medical research papers on it, um, when your parathyroid is low on the borax, or you know, your boron, um, it will become overactive, as I understand. But it, what it does do is it increases the calcium level inside your blood. And the way that it increases the calcium level, level in your blood is it pulls it out of your bones. So when you become low, it's a known fact. But when you become low in boron, your bones start losing the calcium in it. Um, your uh, enamel on your teeth is, I think, it's either your bones or your enamel on your teeth that have the second greatest amount of boron in them. The parathyroid that controls the calcium levels in your in your blood and your body, and your um, I think the enamel on your teeth and then the bones. So you start losing um, your, te your teeth having problems and bones, and pretty soon um, we know these conditions as a you know, severe arthritis conditions. So. Let's see, that's one thing in there. I'm going to throw some notes in here. I want to make sure that I um, uh, cover this stuff in here. Let's see what we've got here. And I apologize. This isn't going to be a perfect video, but it is a video, and, and I just had to put it together. You know, I'm, am I ready? No, I'm just winging it for you. But if I don't do it, then you're not going to have this information. So please forgive me as I just kind of stumble along through this, and I hope that it, it touches what your needs are and that I can help you in some way as I've been helped. So um, if I take a look at this right here, let's let's get into the dose. Um, so if I'm going to mix this, uh, and and what I'm going to put is a link down below here, and the link is called, uh, and, and it's the, the best one that I've found, um, I think it's, uh, I can't remember, it's Mr. Last did a, um, wrote a, it's a research paper. It's got a lot of research in there, a lot of information um, that can really help you. For example, you know, like, and I can't tell all of it, and I, otherwise this video would just be way, way, way too long. But to touch on some of it, I would 
highly encourage you to read it. Absolutely encourage you to read it. Because it's going to hit a number of different topics. And it's not just osteoporosis. For example, the parathyroid, it's one of the hormone glands. And they work in concert with your thyroid gland and your pituitary gland. Um, and the, the pineal, you know, is affected by it. And, the, and it calcifies up as we, um, you know, get calcified. The pineal, pineal gland does, especially when we start taking these fluorides that are all through the water. Um, and these things are all affected. And this pulls the the, the uh, fluorides out of your body, which will have different effects for everybody, you know, depending on what your experiences and your exposures have been to different things. Um, whether you've had amalgam fillings, that pulls all of that out as well. And so this, uh, this article talks about some of what I was just talking about. Uh, and one of the examples was uh, uh, your hormones, the male testosterone and progesterone in women. It will increase, you know, see a, an increase when you first take this stuff. And you know, it might take a few days if you go through maybe a little bit of a healing crisis. Some people go through a healing crisis. Some people don't. And I'll explain that in just a little bit. So this is a teaspoon. So you take a teaspoon of the borax, which is just a pure mineral out of the ground. And you can get the box that says it, just, it tells you it's a pure mineral. And it is. It's, it's in a pure mineral. Or... You can get these, boron, three milligrams. And you can buy it this way and do it this way. I prefer the natural method. If you don't, that's not a problem. You can still get it this way. I personally believe that natural mineral, not the extraction of it to get the boron, it's far better. It's a holistic approach. Okay, so what you want is a rounded teaspoon of this. And the rounded teaspoon has about five to six, excuse my clock, you can hear it in the background. Um, so this rounded teaspoon has five to six grams of borax powder. So about five to six grams. And you put that, oh, here I am. I'll explain why I just started to do that. Let's, and forgive me, I might make a mistake or two in here. I made a video before and I made some mistakes and it had this high pitched squeaking in it. So this is a replacement. I hope this is as good or better than that one. Okay, so, um, and I just pulled it off last night. I thought, I better replace this one. So here's your teaspoon. It's a rounded five to six grams of the borax. And I put this into um, about one liter of water is what they, they tell you. And the borax conspiracy PDF link I'm going to put below, it'll explain that. So this is about a liter. And one quart, this is a quart jar, which is really close to a liter. And so I'm just using that. If you want to be specific, get the liter. Measure it out and get your liter in there perfectly. It's close enough. So it's five to six grams, which is one teaspoon. And you put it in this. This is your concentrate, okay? And I do it this way. And if you shake this around, you'll see that it doesn't suspend it perfectly. Now, the water that you use, it's highly recommended that you use distilled water or some kind of a filtered water or just a good, clean water. I personally like to use a reverse osmosis water. It's almost like um, distilled water because it'll suspend this into it. And theoretically, it'll uh, be more assimilatable. Um, so this is just what I do. You don't have to do that. Get, get a good, clean water. Okay, and if you shake that a few times and come back, you know, there might be just a teeny bit that doesn't. All right, so that's good. Once that's all mixed up, this is your concentrate. Now, I have to point out, you use this as a concentrate. I didn't get this in my last video, and this was kind of a cool, important thing for me. Okay, so, whoop, and I didn't get the lid on very well either. It's flipping a little bit of water. Okay, so one of the things with this is that as you use this up, if you don't shake it, the the borax, you may it looks clear, it'll look crystal clear in there, but it really does settle down. You get a more concentrate in the mind. If you just let it sit, it looks all clear to you. But the reason why I know this is because when you first take this, there's something that's called a uh, 
Hexheimer's effect or Hexheimer. Well, what do you call it? I don't use that term. I always Hexheimer's uh, effect. It's as you some things will cause a detox, and that's what this does. So you want to start with a sl slowly and with a low amount, and that way you have less of a Hexheimer's effect or less of a what I just call it, healing crisis. So if you hear that term, that's what that is. And some of you will be just totally familiar with it and go, yep, I get it. I've gone through cleanses. So if you do cleanses, um, you get you get this healing crisis sometimes when you do a cleanse because as it peels things off. For example, here's a great example. If you go in and get a masseuse to just really work those muscles, they'll break loose toxins and stuff in your muscles. And that's what it makes. Sometimes it makes it... Uh, um, you get a little bit sore in there sometimes, and then if you're not drinking enough water, you know, I know of people who have gone in, they've done it, they didn't drink much water, and they threw up, because it just, it, it gets to you. So, um, you got to drink a lot of water. So, that's one of the things I'll try and remember to get to that. Um, but you got to make sure that you're drinking enough water um, to, along with this. So, keep your water intake good enough with it. Lighting this. Okay, so I think I covered that. There was something else as I go along. There's just so much information I can't possibly cover. All right. So we made our concentrate right here. All right. And this is your boiling concentrate. All right. From there. If I take from this concentrate, oh, and as, so, uh, that's what I was getting at. And so, it's not a big deal to shake it. You just shake it each time you use it, and it mixes it up. Because I didn't do it at first. And initially, for me personally, I got a little, of a, kind of an upset belly. Um, as the, it'll kill your candida off, as it kills off the candida. Candida is through your body, but where it hits is in your intestinal tract, and it starts to kill that candida off, that stuff gets digested, the candida, and it's toxic. So you feel it's, like it's a die-off. And, and that's another term you know, hearing crisis, a die-off. What do they mean, die-off? I mean, there's living stuff inside of us. You bet there is. Parasites, funguses, candida is one of the um, yeast that's in there, and there's various types of it. Um, and everybody's so different. So what your healing crisis is, may not be another. You might have parasites in your belly. All of us have parasites. Of course, I loosely use the word parasite. When I say parasite, I'm talking about the living things that live off of you. And we have some good ones in there, good bacteria in there too. Um, but anyway, so this, um, as you start working down, I found that it, I had a little bit of a healing crisis, and I linked it, and I went, hey, it's, I, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of a belly ache, so I back off a day, let my system flush it out, that's what you're supposed to do, and start back onto it the next day. And it'll be off and running. And it's a little uncomfortable, but what's your health worth? What is your health worth? If you go and take per prescription drugs, and, and even let's just say the uh, um, living on these Advil that I did, you know, to take care of my joints, so I was fine with going and doing normal things that other people didn't mean to take all that. It had a side effect far, far worse than anything that you can get from a little bit of a, a diet off or a healing crisis. Plus, you don't want all that crap in you anyway. So if you tough it out and work your way through it, your life will change. Like you, know, you, can, you can't even believe how much this will make your life change to you. I hope it does. All people are different. Everybody's situation is a little different. Uh, okay, and before I actually get too far along, I wanted to say this, and I, I apologize. I'm taking a lot of time, but I, I think it'll be very helpful, some of this stuff. And it might spark on some conversations. You might want to have some questions. Well, you know, throw those questions in there. And as you find some great results from it, throw it in there. Let other people see, hey, this helped me, or this helped me, or wow, I, I can't believe what helped me. And, and we are all learning from each other, right? And you can call it experimenting, which is, you know, it's convenient. But nonetheless, I mean, for example, you've got uh, a lot of our joint problems. If you've, uh, there's Lyme disease. 
you know, I'm around animals, you know, in my youth. I had ticks on me. I pulled them off quite a few times because I, I just get out in the wild. I love being outside. Never been afraid of it. The tick gets me and freaked me out at first and pull it off or whatever you do. Your quarter turns to the left or you burn its butt and it comes out. But either way, and I don't know, that might have been my root cause. Lyme disease. I may have been fighting this Lyme disease. I don't know. I can't really... And you can't tell me, a lot of these doctors, they can't diagnose a lot of this stuff. They just can't figure it out. And a lot of the stuff is parasitic or funguses or yeast overgrowth, and you can take, take it on. This is just one method, and you need to be using a lot of different methods with it. Um, iodine is another incredible thing that we need to talk about. In fact, I need to make another video of that, and I'll try and touch on that one just a little bit later. But um, the parasites such as the Lyme disease, they'll attack your, attack your joints, deteriorate them, and, and you'll have serious problems. And they get into your, your different uh, organs and stuff and mess them up, and you can get rid of them healthily. There's a lot of ways. This is one of the ways that helps. This will clear your gut. It'll get in there. It'll do all sorts of amazing things. When we start getting uh, higher levels of uh, boron, just, just read that PDF. I'm not going to go ahead and I'm going to try and keep this down. From getting to in detail. This is a teaspoon. One teaspoon, uh, teaspoon of the concentrate. And you can see it's a teeny couple of things that are at the bottom. I need to shake it off again. But that's all right. I'm just doing this. But it's pretty much pretty much uh, dissolved if you taste it. it. It tastes a little bit like teeny sodium taste, just a little bit. But um, this, a teaspoon of the concentrate. Okay, you get a teaspoon of the borax, put it in here, mix it up, and then one teaspoon of it is equivalent to three milligrams. Okay, so a teaspoon is equivalent to three milligrams of boron. Okay, which again, you can take that if you choose to. And you just put that in your water, your drinking water, and I just use regular drinking water in the morning. Um, oh, keep it out of reach of children, too. You know, you just be smart. The box says keep it out of reach of children. Do the, what the box says, what the manufacturers tell you to do. And they need to do that. we got to do that with everything, including salt. Salt's more toxic than this. Um, so if you look at the, uh, um, the material safety data sheet, you're going to find that salt not quite double uh, the lethal dose of salt, paper salt, sodium chloride. It's not quite double what, what this is. So, so this is actually safer for that than the table salt on its lethal dose. You know, according to the MSDS, sodium chloride, which is your white soap, and borax. And I, I can provide those links as well somewhere down in there. In fact, maybe I'll do that. And uh, in fact, I'm going to put a lot of links in there. Um, OK, so we've got that. What else I use in conjunction with this? Is Epsom salt absolutely necessary? Our body needs the the, the uh, uh, magnesium. Oh, you know what, Tanya? I need the is there the little container that little uh, magnesium citrate that's sitting over there? Okay, so you can use it's magnesium is what you really need. So um, there, I made a mistake right there. It's not a mistake, but Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I apologize. Okay, so you've got magnesium citrate. We've used this for years. And if you get in there, it's just a white powder. I've got a whole bunch of it now. I, I'm not going to use it. Because what happened was, is I found, because transdermally, this is wonderful to use. Take baths with Epsom salt. And a little bit of the borax, too. And go and get yourself some, uh, some salts. You know, and take a bath with them. If you want to go take a bath, you put uh, a cup of the Epsom salt, or a little bit more if it's a big bath. A little bit of borax in there too, um, just depending on how you want. And even the salts are great too. You're mimicking the ocean. By the way, these are all stuff you find in the ocean. All of this is totally natural. For millions of years, people have lived by the oceans. Um, this is more, it's a magnesium, magnesium citrate, and it doesn't really dissolve in the water. 
but you know, you put a little bit in there, and I learned about how much, so you didn't get diarrhea, and, and you just put that. And by the way, you know, they say about 400 to 600 milligrams, yeah, 400 to 600 milligrams of magnesium is what they re recommend. Some magnesium, like magnesium oxide, you're just going to get diarrhea. You don't even hardly get any of the magnesium effect. You get 2% or so. So, I mean, this is like a white powder, but, and we used it for years. Great. It, it did make a big difference, but it was nothing compared to this. This is far better for me. And you might find it differently if you're, yeah, Epsom salts, yeah. You know, but it's magnesium sulfate. It's got a little bit of sulfur in with the magnesium, which we need. Sulfurs are wonderful. That's why you had people, the Romans and all of them, they'd have sulfur baths. You go and sit in hot springs, you're soaking up the sulfur. Wow, I have my joints feel good. Gee, I wonder why. Um, anyway, um, this is wonderful. And, and the salts, you can get those if you want to just go cheap. And it's a good way to do it. Go and get some of the, the salt. They make sell a salt powder for at your uh, local farmer's market. And go get a 50 pound bag for, for animals. And it's just mined out of the ground. You just use a cup of it or a half a cup. Throw that in your bath water. It's amazing. It's amazing. Salt sucks stuff out. Okay, so this magnesium is really important. Now, Dr. Dean is, uh, is it Carolyn Dean? It's Carolyn Dean. So Carolyn Dean, anyway, Dr. Dean, and I'll put a link to her stuff. She wrote uh, fantastic. She's great at explaining things. And, and I can't even, uh, it'd just be too long of a video for me to, to hit how important the magnesium is. But you got to take the magnesium once. Magnesium is used in, in throughout your body. The main storage is in your heart. And the problem that you have with uh, an over um, active, hype, uh, an over active uh, parathyroid is uh, yeah, it creates a uh, high levels of calcium which go into your joints and you start getting deposits in the wrong places. And that's kind of where I was at. I had all these deposits and operating is not the way to go. Not for me. I learned that one. So, and my joints are all phenomenal. Um, I had an injury right here. Here's another one. I injured it severely um, when I was building my home, lifting the trusses up and trying to be a he-man and having two people on the other side. And I could get this side. And I blew it out. And, and I was out. And just three years ago, I was putting up my uh, a greenhouse and I was building it. I couldn't even lift the shoulder up past that far. I mean, the whole summer, I was just doing everything with one hand. Slowest work, but God, I just thought, old age, old age, you know, getting kinks and <clears throat> poles and stuff like this. And it was calcification. And what I was doing, and I was making a huge mistake, is I was, I was taking calcium, but I'd feel a little bit of improvement when I'd take it because I was smart enough, haha, <laughs> to go and get stuff that had the magnesium the good calcium, what I thought was the good calcium, it was touted as best, was two parts calcium to one part magnesium. Like 1,000 milligrams of calcium and 500 magnesium. Well, the research, the researcher, and I can't remember if he was a French scientist, I think it was somewhere over in there, he found that it was a two to one ratio was the minimum. Otherwise, you're going to calcify your body up. you got to have the magnesium in there. And we aren't getting it. As we get older, you need more, for whatever reason it is. So I'm going to provide the links. She'll talk far more on that. But as you start to get these calcium in your joints, calcium constricts your muscles. And you start getting cramps in those muscles. Your knees will cramp. You may not even realize that's what's giving you problems. Is they're cramping up on you down in the joints. The little muscles pulling together. Things tighten. You can't seem to move quite as much. You know, don't have that flexibility. Now, I don't have any issue with it, none whatsoever. When I first started, I got that uh, little bit of a, like a stomach fluish feeling, so I'd back off for a day and then, um, uh, and then go back on to it. And I personally had serious issues. So in the Borax Conspiracy article, it tells you to slowly increase the amount that you take each day. But start slow. 
And then you're going to have this die off and this flooding out of all of these heavy metals, which it does do, and the fluorides. It'll pull all that fluoride out of your body um, amazingly. And as you peel all of that out, um, it'll start to, you know, you'll get I, this ache really bad, you know, and I can't remember how far in it was. I should have wrote a journal on it or something. And then after I worked that through and I kept doing it, kept doing it, and all of a sudden it just went away. And then I had flexibility. I mean, I could only do push-ups like this. Pretty soon I was doing them like that. And then my strength that I thought, oh, this is old age. I'm just not as strong as I was. It just kind of started this going off. It wasn't old age. It was calcification. Calcium all through my joints and all this. This peeled it out. All of these things that I'm telling you about. It peeled it out. It was amazing. So um, when you don't have this magnesium, you're going to be calcifying your body up. We get it in the water, and I was taking those pills. My body was using the calcium out of it, and then the leftover was excess calcium that was just depositing it out. And by the way, um, with the magnesium, it works with the borax, as well as a lot of things. And that's how you get it out of your joints, out of your muscles, and back into your bones. You need this stuff. If you don't take this, you're going to have a limited amount of, of healing. That's what happened to me. When I first started, I primarily started with this. And I had, you know, success for sure, for sure success. And then it limited. You know, I, my, I still had some stiffness in my, my, my fingers. When I first started taking it, they tingled up in here. You have almost like when it's going to sleep. Um, uh, like if you sleep on your arm and you wake up and your arm's numb and you lift it up and all of a sudden this tingling up in there. It was like, ah, and you feel like it's hurting. But it's not. It's just getting oxygen and minerals and stuff back up into an area that didn't have it. That's the feeling. That was the feeling that I got. And I've had family members or uh, friends who took way too much too quick. And I say it that way because do it slow and increase it. And you don't even need to increase it. If, you, if you're just working on a maintenance dose, just keep it at a lower amount. So um, that was a healing thing in there as it broke loose and got rid of the uh, calcification up in my joints and I got flexibility back and muscular strength and it's been just wonderful. Okay, so magnesium. Um, Dr. Dean wrote, it's called the Magnesium Miracle and I'll put a link to Dr. Dean's, uh, some of her seminars. She's really good with information. Look her up on on YouTube, and you'll find all sorts of great stuff um, with her, and she'll explain this better. And here's how much I take of that. So I take that teaspoon of magnesium. I apologize. I'm really, really trying to go faster, um, but I just don't want to miss out on some things. I think it'll just benefit me in a huge way while we're going through this. Okay, so. I, I take basically, you know, it could be a three-finger pinch or a two-finger pinch, and the amount, and you decide. So Dr. Dean, you might want to spread it through the day and drink this, like sipping it on it through the day, or you might just want to take one in the morning, one at night. Me, personally, I, I do, you know, start with one teaspoon. If it is okay and you don't have really any of that die-off and all that, everybody's different. If you don't have that issue... Great, fantastic. And you can step it up a little bit if you choose to do so. Um, but you'll find that as you take these, your muscles are just, it's just awesome. Better than any time in my entire life. Okay, so I'm, the best guess that I can say is about, I took about this much, and it's a double lock capsule. It's about what would be in a double lock capsule. Maybe I've got just a touch too much in there. And what happens is if you take too much, you get diarrhea. I mean, it tells you in here, what is it, something like three, three tablespoons of this stuff to get diarrhea, you know, so you can, and it, and it, it tells you how much you use as a, a diuretic, you know, so it's, it's made for it. And see, so you don't even, you're not even using anywhere close to that, so about a double lot. So it's about, I'd say about that much, that'd be about that much. I put just a little bit in here. I don't use a three-finger amount. And so if you do get a little bit of the runs, that's good. It's flushing your system. It's kind of uncomfortable if you're having to 
or your work environment, you can't run to the toilet or whatever. But you can take the 400 to 600 milligrams throughout the day. If you take it all at once, if, you, if I took all that I took in the day at one time, I'd get diarrhea. But I don't. I take this at night and in the morning. Um, and Tanya, and again, start with the, start slow and then work your way up. But I take, and I take a lot, quite a bit more. And I've been doing it for 11 months. So, um, and I, it's just amazing. Everything's just perfect. So, better than when I was a youth. And my wife, she only takes it one time in the evening. And that's great for her. Okay, so she takes the Epsom salts just in the evening. I take it in the morning and in the evening. And I'll even mix a little bit in the daytime with a drink that I'll take through the day. Um, again, that's not off the bat. I wasn't doing it. I took it slow, slowly. This is Himalayan salt, and I like using Himalayan salts. Um, and I'll put provide the links to the magnesium stuff. You got to research it. You've got to have that. Your heart is the highest amount of uh, magnesium uh, organ that you stores it in your body. So if you become deficient in it, you don't want your heart to go low on magnesium not a good idea. You don't want to end your life early, right? Not, and I'm not trying to say it will or whatever, but you listen to Dr. Dean and she's going to explain some very good stuff for you. Ten times better than I can even explain. Uh, magnesium is absolutely essential. You don't want to have a muscle spasm in your heart or anything like that, right? That's where it's stored. So, And any of these sulfa drugs and things like that, Dr. Dean explains her research, what they found with these pharmaceutical drugs and the lack of iodine, iodine rushing into the rescue and sucking it out of your storage, which is your heart, and then all of a sudden you start having heart problems, so they give you a drug for the heart problem, um, like high blood pressure to lower it down, and then that is a statin drug, so then it's, it's a more magnesium deficiency, which counters increasing. You have all these, initially you have this benefit of this drug, and then you start having side effects. Gee, I wonder why. She explains it in there with the, the robbing of the magnesium. You're suffering from magnesium deficiencies, and a lot of us are. Okay, so that's a tip of the iceberg. You gotta check her out. Okay, so right here, if you come to this, it's a double aught again. Now I take, you know, not quite a double aught in salt. Hey, buddy, you know what? You'll get right in front of the camera and in front of me. Thanks, buddy. I do want to see by you. See what I'm doing? You can come over here and watch, bud. I'm sorry. I will drive this dump truck through. Okay, drive the dump. You can drive it through if you want. It's fine. Okay, so the salt. I put the salt in there. This is another huge thing we want to have, is salt. And I, I usually take a, a good pinch, two-finger pinch, and do that in the morning and night. And then, again, this is... I'm trying to get you started on it and really trying to explain that you take it off, take it, you know, s slow. So start with the one, and then if you're okay with that, and then you can increase it if you choose to do so. Um, and you can read those PDF files and I'll explain more of that. So salt is extremely important. Um, you got to hear just a touch about this. Okay, there's two main forms that I use is Redmond salt. And Himalayan. Himalayan has 80 plus minerals in it. 80 plus minerals. Our body needs those minerals. When grandma and grandpa, you know, or great grandma and great grandpa um, used to take care of their pork or their beef or whatnot, they salted it and they put salt all over it. Great preservatives. They were eating that stuff constantly, tons of it. It was important. We gotta have it. And, and it, we gotta be eating it, enough of it. There's a guy, his name's Dr. Brownstein. I love that guy. He is, he's a great guy. He goes around lecturing. People are gleaning from it. All sorts of amazing information. I'm going to provide a few links in there. The, one of them will be, it's, a, it's something on salts. He's, he talks about, he, he wrote a book that was called Salt Your Way to Health. A lot of health problems from people that don't eat salt with minerals. And uh, you can get tons of great minerals from this. He likes to use the uh, salts up on, uh, 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 
I think it's out of France or Norway. It's a, they use the ocean water to theoretically clean up in there. But look, Fukushima and all these things in the ocean water, I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to stay away from that. I bought some, it was good tasting, I liked it. And they harvest it, you can buy it, it's called a, a Celtic salt, and you can get it off of Amazon or something like that. And, and that was good, and I like it, I still do. But this is Himalayan, and they're digging it out of a mountain, and it's way up in the air, and, and then you got the Redmonds that are from the Jurassic time period, the salts, and... Um, Dr. Brownstein explains the, 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 what the salts do. Um, if you take a look at, uh, uh, oh, I think, I can't remember how many years ago um, they would, when people had schizophrenia and stuff like that, he talks about it. Oh, I'm trying to keep this video short. They would put bromides, which is a bad halogen. So are your fluorides, bromides, and your chlorides from chlorine, swimming pool, the silicon. They go in and they displace iodine off of the, off your iodine receptors that are in the body. Um, your thyroid is the main holder of it, so are women's breast, ovaries, men's prostate. Gee, aren't those the ones that are uh, having the highest amount of cancer uh, lately, like in epidemic proportions? Oh, gee, isn't that what happened like before 19... Uh, 15 or so, and the government did all this research, and they found, gee, we can get rid of goiters, you know, these nobules, little uh, growths on our thyroid. People were dying from this stuff. Um, it was an epidemic back then. Um, and anyway, and this all ties together. This is all synergistic. Um, you really need to have iodine. It, all of this that's happened to me is in conjunction with iodine. Okay, so Brownstein is the best. He's the guru, and I'll put a link down there as well with this. And I will like, I'd like to, to make a video of it as well. I'll try to get one in there. And a video of other things like the, how to use borax, hand soaps and stuff. And I know I'm jumping a little bit here and there as I go through. Sorry, I can just do the best I can. I want to cover some of this stuff. But Brownstein um, is the one who writes, he's the, the guru on iodine. He's, he's tested thousands of people for uh, bromide toxicity. And so back to this bromide, the doctors would give bromide to people and it would make them a little bit docile. And so does fluoride. Knocks off that iodine receptor, kind of dumbs you down, bogs you down. Kind of like what is happening right now with the toxic waste being put into our water, the fluorides and all of this. It's just a unacceptable, flat out unacceptable and wrong what they have allowed to happen. And it's got change. Okay, so this uh, these bad halogens, they go in and they knock the iodine off the iodine receptors, and then you're going to have problems with that. Well, we've got in the 1920s, um, they, they iodized the salt. They put iodine in the salt because they found that it cured goiters and it cured these epidemics. It was one of the, the greatest uh, experiments that affected... Um, people and healed people in amazing ways, amazing ways. Now, I'm going to provide those links as well. Um, and that ties into this because as this pulls out your fluorides and this research, it's well known that salt loading removes bromide. That's how they get rid of it. They bromide people and dumb them down, you know, people who are really freaking out. Um, and um, Brownstein explains it 10 times better, but they use salt to get that bromide out. So this pulls out the bromides. It also helps pull out toxins out of your body safely. Salt is needed. We need it um, as we sweat. What comes out, you know, it's salty. Salt is carrying the toxins, and everybody knows. I mean, it's pretty dang well commonly understood that as you sweat, you sweat out the toxins. That's why jogging, and if you can get a little bit of exercise in with this, it'll just make this work way better. Your joints, everything improve. So get in the exercise if you can while you're doing this. Um, and as you sweat this salt out, and see, I personally believe a lot of my problems were because I was putting the wrong salts in. All this heavy exercise, long distance triathloning and things like that, heavy amounts of sweat, running out there in 100 degree weather or whatever, and I'd do it. And then I did great, felt great. But 
you've got to replace the minerals. And eventually, as you don't, every organ that stores it, you know, like you've got the heart that stores the magnesium, you start having heart issues when it goes low. Your thyroid, as you start losing, it's the first one, the highest amount of, of uh, minerals of iodine are in your thyroid. So as you get these fluorides and it kicks all the iodine out, and your bromides that now they've changed, they switched out. They don't even put iodized bread anymore. They bromide it. Gee, I wonder why. Um, so, I mean, it's making us sick as a society. Um, so, as these bromides um, inhabit the iodine receptors, as well as the chlorine, which is in water, you go swimming. And I swam in pools for a long time. For hours, I'd be in there as I was training for big, long runs and stuff like that. Um, go swim in the ocean. That'll revitalize you. It'll suck out stuff. That's what's important to take some of these um, transdermal get the minerals in transdermally and heal these organs as well. It will absolutely get in the bathtub, get that borax in there, go get some salts, do it cheaply. Um, plus it's better, it might have a little bit of uh, clay in there that removes the chlorine anyway. If you get the, the animal stuff and put it in, it's not gonna hurt you. It's, it's salts from a natural ocean from the Jurassic time period. It's such. So, um, what am I gonna say on that? My kids are starting to wake up from their naps. Uh, and hopefully I'm gonna get, their salts are important. I put those salts in there, they will, uh, they carry out the toxins, they carry out the fluoride, they help get rid of the fluorides, that stomach acting up as you, you know, if you get that, I did at first, just a little bit. Tough it out, start slow, slowly work the way up, and all of a sudden amazing things are gonna happen. Um, I hope it works for you. Uh, if you choose to take this path. Okay, your salts. Um, so this pulls that out of the iodine receptors too, your bromides and stuff like that. So you'll bromide detox with it, but it's a healthy way of doing it. It carries it out without depositing it in other areas. Same with your amalgam. So if you, you know, if you, you can go in, you can take selenium too. Selenium will help mercury. If you know you have lots of mercury in your body, take a supplement with selenium. We know research has shown that that will carry it out of your body safely as well. But so does the salts. So do the salts. Salts will carry that out. You need a lot of it. Um, so it's not going to hurt you. Um, it's good for you. And I'll put the link in there and you'll see that it's extremely good for you. Um, let's see. So we got that. We got that. And then, you know, if you mix this up. And, you know, brown steam. Oh, I have something to, to tell you. One more. Um, that's a super important thing. I had to restart it, because I don't know if I had a certain amount of minutes that turned off on me, so. Um, I think I heard it beep, so I hope I didn't miss anything there. Okay, so um, one of the things is, as you displace all of these bad halogens, the fluorides, chlorides, bromides, off of your iodine receptors, which these do, um, it leaves them open. But it's an iodine receptor, so it only makes sense that you take iodine as well. Now, I didn't take iodine until I'd done this for two months-ish, and then when I did it, oh my word. At first, I, everything just it took it to another level. You know, I, I got my joints almost better, and I could feel just a little in there, and I'd notice it here and there, but then I, each thing that I took more of it, just boom, that was the needed ingredient, boom, boom, boom. But the uh, um, iodine is the other one. And what happens is, as this pulls the fluorides off of your iodine receptors, it leaves it sitting there. What's going to jump back onto those iodine receptors? Fluorides, chlorides, and bromides. It'll just jump right back. You'll, you'll get them. You get them. It's all throughout. All the stuff that's around us. Uh, bromides. Um, Brownstein did research. He found, and I started taking the uh, uh, kelp. Because kelp is the highest uh, sea vegetable with iodine in it. Not all kelps are the same. Gee, I wonder why. One of the reasons uh, Brownstein that, uh, did research, and he found that 50% of the kelp didn't even have any iodine in it because it was bromide toxic. Plants and us are very similar. Um, that's why what we need, they also need for, in, for minerals for growing a good, healthy plant. So, that should also be incorporated in small microdoses, 
plant too. Um, but anyway, these sea vegetables, they, uh, they were bromidoxic because the iodine receptors inside of the seaweed is similar to our receptors. And so the bromides kick the iodine out, so you go eating all of this, the, the wrong stuff, and you're going to be getting bromide instead of iodine on 50% of them. So that's why Brownstein in his clinic said, ah, I'm not going to use it anymore. It's not a controllable amount. I can't tell what I'm using. So he used Lugol's iodine. Lugol's is, is the best. It's been used for 200 years. They found that Lugol's, um, they, it's, they found it in, by uh, Dr. Lugol in France found it in 1820s, I believe it was, sometime in that time frame. And then they found that it cured goiters and then all of these things. It's been used for 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 uh, almost 200 years, the, the Lugol's iodine, wonderful stuff. It's the stuff that yeah, they paint on you at the doctor's office, and you can make that stuff for cheap. And you know what's in it, it's pure. So that should be going back in. That stuff's going to pull the toxins out. They've kicked out the iodine, and you just don't get enough iodine. If you live down by the ocean, you're going to have gases coming off of the ocean, iodine gases. Again, all of this is stuff you find in the sea, living by the oceans. Yeah, I wonder why people that live in these Mediterranean environments or down close to the ocean, gee, they tend to live longer. Uh, not always, but there's a vast amount of people that are very healthy along those coasts, especially with iodine deficiency, but they're still not getting a lot of it. There's all sorts of chemicals and toxins and foods that you eat and the crap that's in them and the fluorides that are in them. Um, in my opinion, quite intentionally. In fact, go look it up. You'll find it disgusts you. We need to take back our country. Um, anyway, this, I think I've said enough. Um, I hope it was helpful. If it benefits you, it would be awesome if you left some messages you know, at the bottom, help other people. Um, Keep it out of the reach of children. Uh, um, teaspoon of the concentrate, not, not this. Some will, some people will go and take a teaspoon of this. Um, and in the borax conspiracy, it uses a substantial amount, but they work their way up to that. Start with this. It's a maintenance dose. This is what the body needs. This is just a little teeny bit. Three milligrams, six milligrams, you know, somewhere in there. I'm, I'm still taking a little bit now after 10, 11 months, and I'll probably go right back down to maybe two, two of these uh, teaspoons a day. Um, anyway, let me quickly look at this. Okay, it pulls out the heavy metals. Um, A little cool thing is Brownstein found that of the thousands and thousands of patients in his clinic, 96% of them were low in iodine. 100% um, of them were toxic levels of bromide. Toxic, 100%. He was his first 3,000 patients, 100% of them were so toxic in bromides he stopped even testing for them in his clinic. You have to get on the salt and load it up and get it out of there. So anyway. Uh, da, 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 da. So, and this helps your joints. Hey, when I first started taking the salt, all of a sudden I started feeling tingling up in my joints. I could feel the circulation improving in there. I don't feel any of it now. It's all circulating. Um, uh, and you can tell that. There's actually kind of an interesting thing I stumbled across, and that was uh, using ni niacin. I don't know if it, a lot of people don't take niacin. Niacin, uh, and I take, you've got to take the flush, not flush free, don't take flush free, but the stuff that flushes. And that niacin, when you get a flush, you can see, you turn red because it, it's a vascular dilator, and it and, it, and it's also does some good cleansing at the same time. But nonetheless, um, you don't want to go out because you turn bright red. And as you look at your body, you can see where on your body it isn't red, you have circulation issues. My feet had no red in them. My extremities were not nice 
pink red in there. Now when I take that um, aniacin and I get aniacin flush, my hands flush red, my feet flush red, it worked. It works. So that's a whole nother thing, but it's something I could easily make a video on too, but that, that gives you the main idea. Um, uh, oh, after taking this, when I first started taking it, mammary increases, vision increases, they're all muscles. They're all muscles. And as you decalcify, as you decalcify your body, um, You've got your pineal gland right here, and, you know, back in there, and it decalcifies, and pretty soon, you, it just, for me personally, I just, it was clarity. I just saw things more clear and crisp, um, and th th that was just an amazing thing for me. Um, vivid dreams, they were in color. A um, few things that make that happen as well, not just that, but your pituitary gland, um, and Someone mentioned in the previous video, and it's absolutely true, um, the Germans with the concentration camps, they used fluoride, and they, they used bad halogens to knock the iodine off the receptor and toxify, and it also calcifies your pineal gland as well when you get high levels of uh, fluorides. And so it is part of this calcification issue and uh, helping the functioning of your body's calcium levels. So get rid of those fluorides as well, and you start to see better. Your uh, you sleep better. My sleep. I used to wake up, and I still do rarely. If there's a real big issue, I'll wake up and I'll have the answers early in the morning. That's when I get my best answers. Is in the quiet of the night. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, so I want to end this with just another. Um, verbal statement of again guys and I have to say this I have to say this because each of you are different if you have a healthcare professional that's working with you work with them on it you know if you do choose to, to do this um, everybody's different um, and if you go taking experimenting and taking a whole bunch you know again all I'm going to say is take this therapeutic dose I'm not even going to say take the therapeutic dose I thought I heard a so. Okay, so I didn't, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to say this is how I did it. If you do choose to do it, it's totally your own choice. Um, uh, your choice, and I cannot accept any responsibility for if you're going to do something stupid and taking a whole bunch of the borax and, you know, again, these are trace minerals, okay? But if you read the PDF file, it talks about people who've taken a lot and, and for different conditions, and it's done wonderful things for different people. And I'm not advocating to do that. I'm not advocating to do what I am doing. But uh, what I am saying is this is my experience, and um, check with your health care provider if you have one. Um, and if you choose to do so, it's out of your own choice. And um, that's pretty much it. God bless. And if you have any questions, please feel free to add to the conversation. And uh, you take care and happy healing. God bless.